Hi, this is Trolls Miklovist in Product Management for Storage Networking at Brocade. And I'm here with Dennis Makashinima of our engineering organization. And uh, we're here to talk about uh, non-disruptive firmware updates or hot code load for our SAN extension platforms, like our Brocade 7840 extension switch. In this session, we're going to talk about what the feature is, how it works, and uh, what you need to worry about in terms of taking advantage of that, uh, of that feature. So, Dennis. And then we've had uh, hot code load within the SAN for, for years. Um, now we finally have it for, uh, for the trunking or for the extension platforms as, uh, as well. In a nutshell, what, what is this feature and how does it work? Yeah, you're right. So we've had hot code load with our SAN products, fiber channel products, for over a decade. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's new that we have hot code load with the 7840 extension platform. Right. And Basically, the way hot code load works is we, we have redundant control processors, and we have a lot of software running on these uh, control, control path processors. Right. And um, for fiber channel products, just the regular switching products, we switch the traffic, the, the frames, at, uh, automatically within the ASIC. And the ASIC is completely hardware state machine. There's no processors on the ASIC. So when a firmware uh, upgrade happens, the, the ASIC can keep switching the frames and the code changes on the CP. And the way it works is basically the CPs are redundant and um, the, the state from one CP is replicated to the other CP and, um, and then that happens seamlessly while the traffic is, is flowing. With extension, all of that happens the same. So you still have the switching ASIC that's still switching the, hard, the, the frames automatically, and you also have the control path software failover from one, from one CP to the other CP. The difference with, with uh, hot code load on extension is with the extension products, you have data path processing that happens on every frame or packet. And we have multiple uh, Cavium chips uh, that are our data path processors that that uh, do the manipulation to to the packets and if if you download code to the code that's manipulating the packets you have to be really careful right. um, and and that's that's the main challenge and you have the additional complexity that for the extension um, platforms when you have um, um, with the trunking let's say that we have in our platforms you may have a, a set of different TCP connections over distance. So there's more overhead associated with managing those connections than right. when we're just talking the, the fiber channel connections within the uh, SAN, right? Right. So there's a lot of state about uh, the network that's maintained by the data path processors. Got it. So we've got the two different uh, data processing complexes. We can kind of fail over traffic between the two of them. And, and do the upgrade while we keep the I.O. Uh, flowing. How long does the actual um, upgrade process take? Right, so the way that the hot code load works is, uh, as, as you mentioned, there's two data path processors. So um, what happens is, is we basically, we create uh, backup tunnels mm -hmm. um, on, the other, on the other data path processor. Mm -hmm. So there's a main tunnel and there's backup tunnels. So the traffic will fail over from the main tunnel to the backup tunnels. Right. And um, the, the length of time of the firmware update is, uh, is there's two parts of it. One is the normal FOSS upgrade. So the normal FOSS upgrade takes roughly about 15 minutes. It, it, okay. it can vary up or down based on the size and complexity of the configuration. But with the hot code load on the, on, on the 7840, the, there's an extra step of of failing over the traffic from the main tunnel to the backup tunnel and then back to the, the main tunnel. And right. so that takes an extra five minutes. Got it. So it takes a little bit longer than a kind of traditional upgrade process, but the huge benefit here is that I.O. keeps flowing on the, the replication I.O. over distance. And a key issue here is that um, um, for the setting that these, are, uh, these up platforms are deployed in, it's all about maintaining um, the replication I.O. for kind of a mission critical replication process. Um, customers are concerned about maintaining recovery point and recovery time objective. And any disruption to the flow of that replication I.O. becomes really problematic in terms of maintaining uh, those, uh, those objectives. So here, with non-disruptive firmware update, that means there's no disruption 
That also means there's flexibility here in terms of when that uh, upgrade can be performed. It doesn't necessarily have to be during a shutdown window. It can, it can occur while replication I.O. Is, uh, is, is going on. Now, Dennis, are there design considerations that I have to worry about to really take advantage of this feature? There's really two design considerations to take into account. One of them is configuration of the platform, and the other one is bandwidth considerations. So for the configuration of the platform itself, like, what do I have to worry about there uh, to get this set up properly? Right, it's really quite simple. Basically, uh, to fail over from one DP to the other DP, you need backup tunnels, mm -hmm. and the backup tunnels need an alternate set of IP addresses that, that correspond with the, mm -hmm. other, uh, with the other DPs. Right. So, uh, so I need more IP addresses then in, the, in a nutshell. That's right, and you may already have them. For example, if you already had tunnels configured on the other DP, then you may already have those IP addresses. If not, you have to, to make sure you have enough IP addresses for the backup tunnels. Okay. Um, once I have um, the, the right IP addresses set up for the platform, What's actually involved in the configuration steps? Uh, it's really quite simple. I mean, you basically just just need these IP addresses, and you configure the IP addresses for the tunnels, and, and that's really it. All right, then, so the, the actual configuration process is automatic once those IP addresses are Once those are IP addresses are there, it's, it, it's quite simple, and, and you download firmware, and you don't need to really worry about uh, the, the nuances of the backup tunnels. OK, got it. Now, the other piece you mentioned was bandwidth considerations. So are there things that I have to worry about from the perspective of the replication application that's, that's running I.O. through this platform? Right. So the, the way the firmware download works is you have backup tunnels and uh, traffic fails over from one DP to the other DP. And, and, and then during the course of the backup, one of the DPs will be out of commission um, while firmware is getting, getting loaded on it. So basically, you use half the processing power, half your bandwidth uh, of, of the platform when firmware download is happening. Got it. So, so while the firmware update is going on, I have access to one data processing complex and basically half the maximum throughput that the platform is capable of. So, um, so that means uh, um, we just want to worry about kind of, uh, um, uh, you know, just making sure that we understand, you know, are we still within bounds of what the replication application needs during that, uh, that time period? Right. A well-designed fabric, and this, this applies for both regular fiber channel fabrics and distance extension, you want to make sure that you have headroom for growth, mm -hmm. and you also want to make sure that you have enough headroom for uh, failure of infrastructure components. Right. And so a well-designed network, a well-designed extension configuration should already have the headroom uh, to handle the, the hot code load without impact to the applications. Right. So in the 7840, there's a tremendous amount of uh, throughput available. Um, you can run out replication I.O. up to 80 gigabits into this, uh, into this platform. And what you're saying is that throughput is is critical because you want to have the headroom to accommodate the growth over perhaps you know three or four years of, of deployment of that platform. Plus, you need the, the the headroom to accommodate things that go wrong in the environment. You need the horsepower for that. That's right. All right. Well, excellent. Well, Dennis, thank you so much for explaining all of this uh, uh, to us. Uh, that wraps things up for this session on non-disruptive firmware um, updates or hot code load for our SAN extension platforms. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I encourage you to uh, stay tuned to the Brocade YouTube channel for additional videos that describe how our technical features work.